We're here in Heber, Nebraska at Metal Quest Unlimited. We're gonna find out today about all kinds of careers in the manufacturing industry. So let's take a look. I'm here with Charlie, who is a lathe department leader here at Metal Quest. So Charlie, start me at the beginning. What is a lathe? A lathe is a machine that cuts round objects. It spins apart while the cutter comes in, and the cutter's stationary. So walk me through like a typical day. What do you do? You get here, you punch in. Uh, what do you do when you get started in the day? I get here, I clock in, um, I go to our schedule, see what machines are scheduled for each person, and then I do weekly, daily maintenance if, mm -hmm. that, if it's necessary. Wow. So would you say this job's high stress? I mean, is there a lot riding on what you're doing? Oh, there's a lot riding, but it's very relaxed. Mm -hmm. You can take your time, do what you need to do. And what is this machine making? Like, when it's done, what did it make? This is making a lower stem. Oh, look at that. So it's like a huge, what, $500,000 machine, and it's making one of these yeah. every 50 seconds? Every 45, 50 seconds. 45, 50 seconds. That's pretty good. Now, uh, walk me through your education. Like, what did it take to get here? If I wanted to be like a lathe department leader, what kind of education would I need? Uh, you Your definitely background. need some kind of uh, schooling a machine tool um, or uh, manufacturing engineering mm -hmm. of some sort. Now you started that in high school, is that right? I took basic fundamentals in high school. I, I learned how to read mics, how to run manual mills, manual A's, mm -hmm. and some basic CNC stuff. And then you moved on to go to SEC, is that right? Right. Now how did that add to your education? Uh, they went more in depth on all the topics there is to go over in your machine field. SEC, it's all hands-on. You're, you're doing something every minute of the day almost. You get a lunch break, you get a coffee break in the morning. But other than that, you're, you're nose deep in books or you're out in the shop making stuff. Wow. How did you get this job here at Metal Quest? Uh, they offered me an internship when I was in school and I was more than happy to take it off. Nice. How did you hear about that internship, by the way? Uh, the managers here at Metal Quest, they, they knew some of our instructors for college, and they just put the word out, and my instructors came to me personally and told me about it. So what do you love most about Metal Quest? Uh, the atmosphere here is awesome. Mm -hmm. Everybody's laid back, and I get to run some of the coolest machines in the industry. These are half million dollar machines. It's, it's really rare that they'll yeah. let me come out here and just go nose deep wherever I want. All right, Charlie, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out and explaining these to me. Well, I'm gonna take these sweet safety glasses off and we're gonna go talk business with the VP of Metal Quest. Let's see if we can go find Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey. Good to see you. Thanks for meeting with me. Yeah, nice to meet you. So this is Scott, the Vice President at Metal Quest Unlimited. Why don't you have a seat, bro? I'll uh, right. lean over here and uh, I'd love to just start by asking you what Metal Quest does. Metal Quest is a contract manufacturer. We specialize in machined parts, mm -hmm. precision machine parts, and we also do assemblies. Okay, so you are creating parts that are going into various machines, doing what kinds of different things around the U.S. and maybe even overseas? Yeah, a lot of our product goes into hydraulic applications, whether that's ag or construction related. And then we also have a lot of oil field business where it goes into a lot of the pipes and, and tanks and things like that that are in the oil field. Wow. Our product goes around the world. Our customers are domestic, but the product goes around the world. As vice president, what do you do? What's your daily routine? My daily routine usually starts with analyzing a lot of data. I'm the data guy, so uh -huh. um, on the financial side and the production side and just kind of seeing the health of the company and where everything's at. Um, I'm over directly overseeing shipping, receiving, the customer service, purchasing those departments, and then with me and a few others overseeing the rest of the company. Uh, I do a lot of development work where I'll uh, integrate different equipment or design different mm -hmm. software and design it and then integrate it into the company. Do a lot of process and procedure development as well. Wow. And then also uh, training. I, work with the training program. That's a ton of different stuff. What is like the current cutting edge technology that you guys are using here? Well, it's not really cutting edge, but the new thing for us is robots. We're huh. really getting into robots and automation. Like if you could picture your ideal employee, this person comes in, you're, you really can't wait to hire them. What kind of uh, training and education background do they have? The best employee we could get would be somebody out of a, a a trade school like mm -hmm. an SCC or Central Community College that, that or you know some any co 
college like that that has a good fundamental knowledge, but there's really so much more than that. Mm -hmm. and that helps with the training aspect because there's not quite as much stuff we need to show them early on. So as long as you're open to learning and excited about learning and work well with other people and work well in our company, that would be the perfect person for us. So we know there's a ton of manufacturing jobs all over the Cornhusker state. But did you know there's a company in Minden that's actually creating some of the technology we see on planes, jets, and even the stuff that makes your phones work? Let's go learn a little bit more about Royal Engineered Composites. All right, guys, joining us now is Dave Arnold. And Dave, tell us a little bit about what you do here. I'm the president here at Royal Engineered Composites, and basically I'm in charge of our vision of where we're going, uh, new opportunities, and helping pursue those with our customers, looking for new business environments to expand and grow in, and also uh, responsible for the integration of our you know, uh, finance, sales, marketing, and operations to help deliver our, our uh, solutions to our customers. Okay, cool. And what does Royal Engineering do? So Royal Engineer Composites, we deliver uh, composite components, which are epoxy resin and a, and a cloth, and we build up parts for, for aircraft, for helicopters, uh, for jet engines, and deliver them to our customers like Bell, Boeing, uh, Sikorsky, uh, Northrop Grumman. Awesome. So can we meet a young professional? Yeah, let me introduce you to Amy. Okay guys, so now we are in the inspection and testing lab and we're joined with Amy Everly. Amy, you're a quality manager here. Tell me about what that means. A uh, quality manager really oversees uh, the entire facility. They uh, oversee specifically inspection and, and the testing labs, but they also have a they also have input into all areas of manufacturing from the very beginning through engineering all the way through the final shipping and uh, correspondence with the customer. Right, so you're making sure that before a product leaves the building that it meets your standards. It meets our standards, it meets the customer standards, it meets the regulatory agencies if necessary. So you've been here for 17 years, right? That's correct. And you haven't always been quality manager. No, uh, initially I started out as a receptionist. Um, over time, I, I switched to a few different areas and ended up in the quality department as an inspector. And from that point, uh, continued on with quality and then stepped over into a continuous improvement uh, process where we were able to go out and problem solve a lot of the defects that we were having on the floor. Uh, during that process, a degree came open through Central Community College for the quality technology degree, and I went ahead and pursued that. Awesome. So you were getting your quality technology degree while you were still here working? That's correct. About 90% of my degree was online, so I was able to continue to work while I was pursuing my degree. Wow, so climbing the ladder here at work and getting your degree at the same time. Cool. So tell me about some of the skills you gained while you were pursuing that degree, getting your education. Uh, a lot of the quality technology de degree program involves problem solving. Uh, it uses a set of statistical tools to analyze data that drive improvement, which at the end prevents defects. It makes your process a lot more uh, efficient. and. Then there's the other side of it too, where you can get an auditing and compliance side of the quality program. Okay, really cool. So definitely a lot of different kind of skills. You were telling me creativity, problem solving, thinking, uh, critical thinking, those kind of skills? That's correct, that's correct. A lot of what you would get through the quality uh, career would be an inquisitive, you know, you'd be able to problem solve. It's an inquisitive uh, type of a career. It's also a creative, so you, you can have some creativity into the way you approach your problem solving. So what does a typical day look like for you? A typical day here involves um, collecting data, looking at some of the defects, uh, going hands-on to problem solve some of the issues that the operators might be having on, on the floor, as well as interacting with customers through engineering and also a, a form of sales too. So can you show us how you do some of that? Sure, you can go back and look at inspection. Awesome. Okay, Amy, where are we now and what is this thing that I'm holding? We are actually in the digital inspection lab and what you're holding is called a ferro arm. It is a portable CMM, a portable coordinated measuring machine. And what it does is it will take points across the part 
and then you can analyze the data to determine whether your part meets our customers' requirements. Okay, cool. So the parts are coming in here as you guys are making them. Correct. Right? And so what you're doing there is you're just touching on the edge and you're taking some points across the surface. Okay, really cool. So what is this machine doing for us? The machine is actually determining where this physical part sits in relationship to a digital model. Once the inspection is complete, then the operator will analyze all of the data to determine whether it is in compliance with what that model is looking for. Wow, really cool. Thank you so much, Amy, for showing us around. And this is just one of the careers you guys hear at Royal Engineered Composites. Our search for careers in manufacturing brings us to Grand Island, Nebraska at Chief Buildings, where they're building buildings. Safety glasses on, I'm going in. I'm here with Dave Kobeck, who's the Vice President of Operations for Chief Buildings. Dave, why don't you tell me uh, what you guys do at Chief? We make, uh, we make metal buildings that make it really simple. Structural steel systems, bigger retro sets that we just send down the road for, for the construction industry. And it takes a lot of people to make that happen, doesn't it? Our little, our little business takes 340 people of a wide variety of jobs, everything from welding to drafting to engineering to, to, to marketing. So it, is, it does take a lot of people to, to produce that product. Wow, a wide range of careers, a wide range of educational backgrounds, is that right? Absolutely. We've got everybody from high school degrees, learning to weld in high school, to, to community college for drafting and welding, um, all the way to engineers, to programmers who have, who have master's degrees in their, operate, in their business. Yeah, and you're not locked in. Once you get hired with Chief Buildings, you're not just doing the same thing every year for the rest of your life, is that right? No, if you really want employees to be engaged and enjoy their job, they need to have career paths. And so we have a lot of different pathways that you can go. A, a drafter can go in the manufacturing world. A, a manufacturing guy can come over here and be a drafter the next day. Estimators to, to purchasing department. You can, you can go a lot of different, you can branch out a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. What kind of environment are you trying to create at Chief Buildings? It's a combination of performance and fun. You know, we have deadlines we need to meet, but on the flip side, we want to have some fun along the way. Um, we spend a lot of time with these people, so you know, we, we need to have fun during the, during the day. Mm -hmm. And so, what kind of employee are you looking for when you're thinking about hiring someone to fit in that deadline, yet family, kind of fun-driven atmosphere? What sure. kind of person are you looking for? Sure, combination of some things. You know, we need, we need somebody who's going to be a good teammate, somebody who's, who's fun to be around during the day. And then, of course, somebody who's flexible because in the last five years we've learned that we need to change a lot and evolve and be able to meet customers' needs. So flexibility is a big one. And then, of course, accountability comes with the performance side so that we can really perform well and, and, and shine. Thanks so much, Dave. Thank I really you. appreciate yep. it. All right. Well, this is Brent. Brent, why don't you tell me what you do at Chief Buildings? Chief Buildings, I'm in the estimating manager. I manage uh, eight estimators who uh, all have their own district managers who manage costs and uh, price out costs for our quoting purposes. Wow, so what kind of educational backgrounds do those estimators have? They have anywhere from construction management to um, drafting to, uh, you know, they came from other um, companies outside the Chief. Mm -hmm. Now, estimating might seem pretty general and vague, but it's kind of a, a complex uh, job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, depending on the quote that's coming in, the building that's coming in, we have to review specs, we have to review plans, we have to uh, make sure the, the end customer is getting exactly what they send in to us with those plans and specs. And it's pretty high pressure. I mean, you guys meeting deadlines, turning things over really yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we always have to turn quotes around, you know, most of the time two to three days. Sometimes we get, you know, four hours. You know, it just depends on, you know, the quote and the building. Yeah, now tell me about your educational background. I went to UNL, have a degree in civil engineering. Mm -hmm. um, right now I'm currently going to get my master's in engineering management. Now how did you first get hired at Chief? When I was in college, uh, I saw a flyer, you know, probably a year and a half before I graduated. And uh, it was for cheap buildings. They were hiring engineers. And, one of those uh, little tear-off number yeah, flyers. Yeah, exactly. Look exactly. At that. Exactly. Well, and I, I wasn't ready to, to look for a job, but uh, and I went out on their website and sent an email, and somebody got back to me, and you know they hired me. I send an email. Look at that. That's awesome. What's your favorite part of your job? Favorite part is you know trying to help my employees develop as their career. They go down their career path. I, I really enjoy 
seeing them grow and seeing myself grow as a, as a manager. Hmm. So even though you're an engineer, you're taking management classes, your favorite thing about it is the people. Yeah, is that right? exactly, exactly. It's, it's enjoyable to, to watch them. That's great. Wow, Brent, thanks so much. Maybe I'll come work for you someday. There we go. Awesome.